Uh, good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this opportunity to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it is it is a wonderful time for us to be able to use this technology, and I'm waiting for a moment here because I had a little glitch here that I needed to straighten out, but. That's okay. You're here. I am here. So yeah, good evening. Good evening. Good to see you here today. Good to see you here. And it's time for our Bible class. I'm, I'm waiting for everybody that um, if you'll share this right now. So good evening, waiting for uh, you to get into the room and be a part of the conversation tonight. I'm excited to hear about um, here to share what the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is with you. Uh, as he has shared it with me today, all of you that are coming in from across different platforms uh, tonight, I was a little bit distracted there for a moment because we're using a, a piece of technology that is relatively new for us, but thankfully um, it can reach. Yeah. Okay. Thankfully, it hopefully it can reach as many people as we uh, are intending to reach using this technology. So those of you who are in Facebook and around other social media sites, we ask that you would be respectful in your comments. So we don't want to block and lock it out across the platforms, but we will if we have to, because we're here to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and um, want you to hear what the Lord is saying. Uh, to you. Um, there are, there is, a, a, there is amazing things that are happening right now. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut off a couple of things here because I can see right now we've got a problem here, y'all. We've got a problem. We want to shut off as many of these as we possibly can because we don't need any distractions right now. And we're just not going to have it. Okay. We're just not going to have it. Okay. So we're going to take care of that right now. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Yeah. You know, some people have nothing better to do than to be distracted, <laughs> be distraction, be a distraction. And so we are here tonight to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Welcome again to Bible class. I'm Dr. Faye. If you've not been here before, we're glad that you're here and that you can participate tonight with us as you hear what the spirit of God is saying. So I want to pray and you pray with me as we continue to do this. We are a multimedia ministry reaching the world uh, with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have a message to influence people um from the core so that we can shift that's what we want to do so father in the name of jesus i thank you for this great opportunity that we have to share the gospel of the lord jesus christ with so many hurting people people who are 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 stuck in life and are looking for answers people who are crying out father from wherever they are for and a divine intervention uh, they're calling, Father, your name, and some of them don't even know, Lord God, your word, but they still know that there has to be some power, some source, some supernatural power that's greater than what they're going through. And we're asking for a divine intervention on their behalf tonight. And I thank you, Lord God, as your spirit moves in this room, I bind, rebuke principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness and the rulers of the darkness of this world. I cast out every satanic influence and every satanic force that would try to come in to criticize, to judge, to hinder in any way. And I command Satan to leave this place and that your people will hear what the spirit of God is saying to their local church, i.e. me and them. God, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor for this opportunity. Amen, amen, amen. Again, welcome to church tonight, and I hope you've got your Bibles. I hope you've come with, with uh, the mind to receive what the Spirit of God is saying. 
I am so excited about the gospel, aren't you? I'm excited about the good news because there's a lot of news and it ain't all good either, honey. <laughs> but we've got good news, news you can use, news that will transform your life to take you out of isolation, stagnation, procrastination into a place of transformation that you can be empowered from your core to go forth and change nations. So God has given me a message tonight. It won't be long, but it'll be strong to transform your life. So if you have your Bibles, but remember, caring is sharing. So start sharing, 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 sharing with your network, sharing with your friend base uh, and your groups as well. OK, and share it in your story. So in Romans, the 12th chapter, one of my favorite passages of scripture. I say that a lot because I have a lot of favorite passages of scripture. But in Romans, the book of Romans and the 12th chapter. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So it's expected. And do not and do not. And whenever I see the word do not and don't, I see it as a command, not an option there. When it's a command, it is a directive from the holy God himself saying, this is what I want you to do. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I use good, acceptable, and perfect as in filling the gap. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. I spoke a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was now, about uh, being a conformist, going along to get along. Just whatever the majority wants to do, that's where you'll find yourself. Some people are stuck on popularity syndrome. They believe that as long as it's popular, that it's the right thing to do. As long as it's the majority, then that's the way we should go. But how many of you know that that is not the truth? So God has given us his Holy Spirit. He's given us his word. He's given us access to heaven, access to him for us not to be conformed to this world, that we don't have to do what everybody else is doing. We don't have to do what the majority is doing, and we don't have to go the way of the world, but we can go the way of the word because the way of the word is totally different than the way of the world. And you'll find out when you begin to get into the word of God that you will begin to live a life differently than maybe the people that you have been keeping company with. And that you no longer have communication with those people because your, your vocabulary begins to change. How many of you know that happens? You begin to speak the word and not the world. You begin to talk about the good news and not the news. You begin to share what the Holy Spirit prompted in your spirit. You begin to share about the dreams and the visions that God has given you and not the things of the world because you don't have those conversations anymore. It doesn't take long to assess whether or not somebody's in the word, but we're not talking about them. We're talking about us, right? Because when you're in the word, the word will come out of you. The word will come out of your mouth. It will come out of your life. You'll find yourself moving into this place of a complete metamorphosis, like the caterpillar. The other day, I was out in the country. Well, I live in the country. <laughs> this is the country. Arkansas, the whole country, is a country, is the country. But I was out in the country, country, and I saw all of these little hairy worms crawling. And there were there were some bugs, and I had my spray can, and I was spraying all these bugs. And then I saw these hairy bugs. And I thought, oh, my gosh, what are those things? So I asked one of the guys, I said, what are those things? That, those are hairy worms. He said, no, those are caterpillars. It's been a while since I was in third grade. OK, so he said, those are cal caterpillars. And I went, oh, we don't want to kill them, do we? They become butterflies. We don't want to kill the caterpillar. So I started thinking about the caterpillar. And that was just a no, it was yesterday, in fact. I started thinking about the caterpillar. And I said, no, the caterpillar, the caterpillar, it look, it's ugly. It's gross looking. 
like much of our lives. It's ugly. It's gross looking. The thing that Jesus, uh, wow, the, the thing that Jesus came to say, it, it was horrible. It was sin in his every, every core of his being. It was sinful in his nature. And here I see this caterpillar and it's a it's just a, a, a gross looking wormy thing, all hairy and it's ugly. But I knew that it would become a butterfly, but it couldn't become a butterfly today. It had to go through this process. And so I began to think about the process of the caterpillar becoming a butterfly and all the little intricate details that involve in that genetic being changed over that genetic coding taking place where if there is a metamorphosis where the old thing is being passed away come on somebody help me church come on pray with me where the old thing is passed away and behold all things have become new so that the old creature the old uh core the old of person if you will does no longer exist knock knock who's there not the old person when I first relocated back to Arkansas, and and most people know me by my full name, they know you by your birth name. When you grow to your hometown, they don't say Dr. Faye necessarily. Some people do. Some people say Faye, and most of them go, Willie Faye. That's my first name. Willie Faye. And I go, oh, I'm at home. Because people remember you from when you were 10. They remember you when you were 12 years old. So in their minds, and, and not all of them, and some of their minds is that you're still that person that you were back in 1999, not back in 1989. So they lock you into that place and they don't give you room to grow. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You don't have room to grow when people lock you into a certain mindset in their own minds. But that is not what God did for us. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. When Nicodemus came to Jesus in St. John, the third chapter and said, you know, how can a man be born again? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? And Jesus said, no. I'm not talking about the natural, that which is spirit is spirit and that which is flesh and flesh, Nicodemus, you must be born again. You've got to have this new creation reality. You must have this process of regeneration, this process of metamorphosis where the old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. And that brings me to this point, ladies and gentlemen. For too long, the body of Christ has allowed people to say they were saved and they weren't saved because so many pastors, I love you, brother, I love you, sister, were so in a hurry to get people getting the numbers up that we didn't get people born again. Hey, Papa, that we didn't take them to, through the salvation. I remember as a small child going to church with my grandmother. And in my grandmother's church, that we call it the holiness church, where people, I mean, filled with the Holy Ghost, they spoke in tongues, they rolled in the floor, they prayed and they prayed and they prayed and they prayed. I go to sleep, wake up, they still pray, and yeah. And then there was another church where they didn't do all of that. They had more structure at this time. They did that, and you know, they did the programs and blah, 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 blah. They knew what time they were gonna get out, you know, when the preacher would tune up. They would call it. Then they they knew, and I would wake up in the tune, and they knew it was time for benediction. But in those days, people believe that you must be born again. Can anybody talk about that today? You must be born again. The caterpillar must become the butterfly. There must be a process, a metamorphosis. There must be a change from the inside out. It's not about we had we had 30 people to join the church today. That's not salvation, darling. We had we had this many. We we have 30,000 members in our church. But I wish somebody would get up to tell me that you have 30,000 born again, spirit filled, on fire, God loving, word loving people in the church. Then, then we could do something with that. I was reading the other day about Gideon. That it and it doesn't take God great numbers for God to do great things. Can anybody say amen? 
but it does take a great heart. It does take people who are willing, but you cannot get to the place of willingness until God has done a complete work on the inside of us. And I'm asking you tonight, I'm asking you right now in this moment, in this message, if you are sure that you're born again. Hey, Papa, have you really received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Don't tell me that you're born again and you can't have his fruit and his character in your manifest and manifesting in your everyday waking, walking, talking life. I've heard far too many messages to say, yes, you're born again, but you know, you're still carnal and you're still fleshy. That's all true. But still, we must get in the word of God in order that the mind and the soul can be transformed. But there are places you can't go and things that you won't want to do when you are born again. Hey, somebody say amen, church. You can't hate me because I'm black if you're born again. You can't hate me because I'm a You can't hate me if you're born again. I know a preacher who, who has ought in his heart against me. And that brother, every time, and I still call him brother, when he sees me, he'd rather avoid me than to speak with me. But yet he pastors. How can you pastor with hate in your heart, with animosity in your heart? Come on, I'll talk to somebody tonight with bitterness in your heart. How can you stand up and say that you are a man or a woman of God and you're a child of God, but yet you have all this garbage on the inside of you and you're wondering why God doesn't use you and the presence and power of God is not on your everyday waking, walking, talking life. It's time to turn to Jesus, folks. It's time to get on the altar again, even the virtual altar, and begin to repent and to cry out to God to say, Lord, forgive me that I've sinned. Forgive me that I've been playing church. Forgive me that I've been a pew sitter and I've been a choir singer. He shut the choirs down. He locked the doors. And now it's time to really get real with God. It's time to begin to knock on. Oh, yeah. Let me do this. God has given us a space of repentance. That's where we are. And in this space, it's time to turn to God. Hey, Papa. Because pretty soon, like in the days of Noah, the door will be locked. God is crying out to somebody right now to turn, to turn to me with every fiber of your being. You know, you've been slipping and sliding on your wife. You know, you've been committing adultery, pastor. You know, you've been doing it. You know, you've been doing it. The only reason that you hate going, not going to church because you cannot sin in that place behind closed doors. Now you got to, you know, be quarantined. I don't believe I just said that. I did, didn't I, y'all? God is talking to his people and saying, come to me, come to me, all of you, lean on me, come to the altar. I need all of you. I don't, I don't want your lip service anymore. I want you. Hey, Papa, I want all of you. I want you to come back to the bleeding side of Calvary. I don't care even if you think you are born again. You need to examine yourself right now to see if you're still in the faith. You need to learn to buffet your body and bring it under subjection. And like the Apostle Paul said, Let Esther, lest after I've preached to everybody else, that I myself will be a castaway. A few moments ago when we went live and people who see this and they know that it's Christian, but yet we have these filters that come in and I had to, I had to go off of one of the, uh, the platforms because somebody immediately spammed and just started mocking and making fun. And you think that, do you really believe that the devil is going to just sit back and let me preach this gospel without warfare? You are sadly mistaken, honey, because I am here to tell the truth so that men and women may be set free by the presence and power of God, for it will take the anointing to destroy yokes and to set captives free. And we cannot care about faces. And I haven't for a long, long, long time. I've been in multimedia way before the pandemic. Turning on the camera getting in front of this camera, doing what I do to preach this gospel. But this is a call for repentance because too many have conformed to this world. You're having conversations about Democrats and Republicans. That's not your business. Uh-oh. 
The government is upon his shoulder and of his kingdom, there is no end. Trying to choose sides. What kind of foolishness is that for the child of God? This government in this world is not our government. Our government is of God. Our government is heaven. Our government, um, our citizenship is heaven. We're under a different authority. I've spoken about these things. Go back and listen before we pull the videos down or one of the media platforms does it for us, but we're going to shift it on to the ones we pay for. That's why God blessed the child with their own. Yeah. Because this stuff right here, it's a seasonal thing. Believe when I tell you, you that are hugging it and loving on it, it's a, I'm telling you, certain platforms, you're going to see them just start shutting down because God has a mission and a plan for, for this hour, right now, this space and this time, it is strictly for the gospel. And I keep telling people this, but so many Christians, they get offended so easily because they don't have the right relationship with God. This moment is for examination time. It's to get under the microscope of the word of God and see if we're in the faith. Not in fear, but out of reverential respect. Where are those who are respecting God? Hey, Papa, where are those that will humble themselves under the mighty hand of God that he can exalt us in due time? Where are those who are just looking for him and not for what he can do for them? Because in the seeking of him, everything else dissipates. You don't even know that you're hungry. You don't even know that you're missing anything. It reminds me of when I first traveled to Africa in the... um. In, in Ghana, in Obwazi, in Kumazi area, and went into the bush bush country. And I remember just watching the little babies, the children, the toddlers just running up and down on a garbage heap and finding whatever scraps they could have for food and take that. And they were laughing and having a good time. And I began to weep before God. And I said, Lord, why are they so happy? And the Lord said, they don't know they're poor. I said, oh my. Let them be my teacher today. Teachers come in many forms. Let these babies be my teachers. And I discovered in that moment that when you don't know you're poor, when you don't know you're broke, you've got your eyes in the right direction. When your eyes are on God, you're immune to that stuff. Jesus told us in Matthew 6 to take no thought for our lives anyway, because all these things come by seeking him first and the kingdom of God, seeking first the kingdom of God and all of these things are added. Hey, Papa. Don't be conformed. Don't be tricked by the enemy anymore. Allowing yourself to go down paths that you should not be going down, not consulting God because you think you are, you, you, you don't need him until something happens. Maybe something is always happening in your world. Something is always going on. Some of the things that you don't even know are stirring in the back, in the booth, in the corner, in the dark. Something is going on underneath the current, underneath the surface. Something is going on in the dark corner. Something is going on in the secret place. And we need to be in fellowship with the holy God. We need to reverence this God who created the heavens and the earth. We need to stand in his counsel, his wisdom, his knowledge, and his ways. We need to not be moved like the psalmist said in Psalms 1, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. For his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And his tree shall be like a rivers. His tree shall be, his roots shall go deep. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water, by the rivers of water. His leaves shall not wither and whatsoever he does will prosper. That's deep, darling. That's deep and strong and wide and secure in God. Meditating in the word of God day and night. That's what God told Joshua. Hey, Papa, you're going to, if you meditate in my word, you're going to make your way prosperous. You will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Many of you are crying out, God bless me. And God said, if you would just get in my word, the word will prosper you. The word will bless you. 
the word will give you favor. Yea, the word will show you mercy and kindness. The word will do it and it will work 100% of the time. I have the utmost confidence in the word of God that this Bible, yes, is inspired by the same one who said, let there be light. And then there was. Whatever you are doing right now, you need to stop it. Wherever you're going, you need to consider God and ask him if this is the way that you should go, if this is the person you should be with, if this is the road you should travel, is this the, is this the business you should be in? Is this the company? Is this the place you should work? Well, you need to consult with the great counselor himself and find the way, find the road, find the path that you need to be on, darling, and get in get moving in that direction. You know, everybody needs somebody. The Bible says in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. Yeah. Surrounding yourself with people who are impactful, people who are, 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 are strong in God, people who are anointed and seeking God. Yes. And I don't mean just uh, uh, anointing for a moment, but people who are living an anointed life. Hey, Papa, a separated Messiah life, a Christ appointed life, called of God life that are standing in the councils of God every day. Yet so many are deceived. I hear the Holy Spirit. So many are deceived and you're following numbers when you should be following Jesus. He said, come now and let us reason together. And though your sins be as scarlet, I, I'll wash you and I'll make you white as snow. You don't have to continue down the path of rebellion. The Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Yeah. There's a whole lot of wizard, wizardry or wizardry or whatever going on. Body of Christ, we must arise. I've been saying that for the last 90 plus days, we've got, we must arise. And I can't tell you to repent if I'm not repentant. If I'm not living a life that's filled with animosity or whatever it is, and I'm not being living from a repentant place, but I am, I am, I am, Sam, I am. Living from a place of repentance, I'm quick to repent. You must be quick to repent. And wherever you are around social media, any platform, repent. Well, I don't need to repent. I got grace. Grace is the reason you need to repent. Exactly, sir. Exactly, sir. Grace is the call to repentance. I feel the presence of God in this place. Because somebody's been crying out for answers. And God is saying, I've got your answers. Turn to me. And if you'll return, you will find out he's the father that never left the house. He's the one that will embrace you and love you and take you in his arms and tell you just how much he really cares for you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Sweep in this atmosphere right now. Move among this people. Even those who have rejected you. Even those who have mocked you. Move in the midst of this people. May your mercy be upon the rebellious house. So that they may come to the bleeding side of Calvary and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. Move in this house, Holy Spirit, move in this house on every man, woman, every person, Father, from every walk of life and those who think they know in God, you know what we know and what we don't know because you know our frame, you know us all together according to Psalms 139. You know the very thing that we're made of. You know, you know, you know, you know us all together. Forgive us 
for playing church. Forgive us for turning on these cameras and getting on here without your blessing. Rakoraboshanda. Just because everybody else is doing it. Forgive us for misuse and abusing the times of your servants and your people, Father God. Forgive us. Forgive us for taking you for granted while we continue to live the lives we want to live instead of the lives that you've called us to live. Forgive us. And as the psalmist said, Lord, I know you won't, but I'm asking you anyway, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, he said, create in me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. Renew that right spirit within me. I want to walk holy. I want to walk saved. I want to walk sanctified. I want to walk in the righteousness of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I don't want to walk in the old order. I don't want normal God I don't want what was though the outward man perish the inward man is renewed day by day give me that renewing that renewal give me that anointing to destroy yokes and set captives free don't let me pass by my neighbor who's hurting and I don't I don't have the power to heal What's the point? Let every encounter be a godly encounter. Let every encounter be something impactful in, in, that will change the person's life in, in front of me, or it will, or it will that their presence will change my life. But God, don't let me be normal. regardless of what they say and what they call me and what they do to me. God, I just want to be consumed by you. Holy, 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 holy spirit, move in this room right now. Move amongst this people in Facebook and Instagram and Periscope and LinkedIn and YouTube, all across these platforms in Periscope. Use me, Father, for your glory. Anoint me for a divine purpose for a person that is practicing witchcraft against your people. Every satanic force, every seductive force that would try to come against your people, I bind and rebuke it in the name of Jesus under the apostolic anointing that you have placed upon my life. I own that. I cast out the spirits of divination and the spirits of sorcery off of these platforms. I cast out the spirits of the Antichrist from across these platforms. I take my dominion and authority I take the scepter of righteousness in the name of Jesus and through his blood. And I command the powers from the underworld, the dark side to cease and desist their manipulation, their maneuvers. And I command those that are blind. I command those eyes to be open. I command those who are deaf, the ears, the spiritual deaf ears to be unstopped. I command, I command every demon that has held you bound to loose you and to let you go. I command that spirit of deception to go from you now in the name of Jesus. There are people praying with me. I feel your prayers. I'm not here alone. And the angels hearken to the voice of these words. And they're busy going out, bringing it to pass. All freedom will cost you. And taking people out of chains and shackles is an ugly scene. So I'm not always soft and nice. 
because there's a warrior in this here girl. And he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Rotto Mohaya. And out of his mouth comes a mighty sword. Are you ready to turn? Or are you going to keep on doing what you always done? Being insane. Are you gonna keep on, keep on doing that? You know what that is. These days are the mercies of God days. And while the mercies of God days are still here, he said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Yeah. Oh, yes. His mercy endures forever. But he didn't say it endure forever for you. Don't get it twisted. These are heavy sayings, but then somebody's got to say them. And not everyone can receive them. Not everyone will but that doesn't change the fact that I have to do what God called me to do. Whether they were here or whether they will forbear. These are the days of mercy. Holy, holy, holy spirit, move in this atmosphere. Shift, change, woo. Pull up, pluck up, tear down, build, and plant all over again. Somebody is ready to be transformed. And I don't want to stand in anybody's way of transformation. Will you be a vessel that God can flow through, that he can use now? Right now. Right now, he needs your hands right now. He needs your voice right now. He needs you to be totally and completely engaged in the calling on your life. And see, even your body will resist change. I was in a coaching class before Bible class tonight. And I realized my, you know, we don't want to do the hard stuff. And Dr. West was talking about that. We don't want to do the hard stuff. We want to put it off. We want to procrastinate. The hard things. I don't want to go to the gym every day. And I'm not going every day. I'm not going to tell that lie. But on a consistent basis. But you know how you feel when you're first getting rebooted? And sometimes you've been booted for a while. You you don't want to, you know, move. But then once you get there, all that's over. Isn't that something? It's like you gave birth to it. All that's over. Your body will resist change. So don't let it have control. Put it under subjection to the word of God, the Holy Spirit. Yes, put it in check. Make it do what it's supposed to do. Make it do what it's supposed to do. I'm happy that I can distance myself from sugar. I'm happy that I can distance myself from anything that's really bad for me to eat. I'm happy about that. It seems like that's not an issue, but pulling to get to that jail. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to do it. And you hold me accountable. All of you. I don't care. You hold me accountable. You can message me and say, did you go to the gym? I shouldn't have said that Taylor Williams be texting me every day. Or Sterling. They will stay on me. They're my 20, 20 something, 20, 21, 24. 
year old on fire for God. But they can because I don't care. I don't care who holds me accountable. Because you mean, I mean to tell you, I want to live for God. So if you put me in check, I'm just going to be in check. If you tell me that, hey, is that the direction God is calling you in? Give me a pause so that I can go and look again. Go and look again. See what I see. Until I see what I need to see. That's why we need the body. Every member in its place. We don't even know how to be fa the family of God. We've been so divided for so long that family sounds like a foreign concept. And the reason God gave us a natural family for it to be a, a type and shadow of spiritual family. But we're holding on to the wrong family. We're holding on to the thing that's not going it. You know, we're holding on to the wrong family. And not that we shouldn't appreciate and respect that. But Jesus said, who is my mother and who is my brother? But they who do the will of my father. And no man hath left mother, father, sister, brother, houses of land for my sake in the gospel that he shall not receive a hundredfold. And I believe that's Mark 10 and 29. Somewhere around there. Look it up. It's okay. Are you ready? to give God your all, everything, everything, everything that you are. And I promise you, I promise you, if you will do that, you will never be disappointed in him. You will never be disappointed if you give God your all. Lord, you can have it. You can have all of me. You can have all of me. You want that piece? Yeah, you can have that too. You want my marriage? Yeah, you can have it. You want my son, my daughter? It's you can have them. You want my business, the ministry? You got that too. I have to recommit it to him at least. I don't even know how often because I can just take off running until somebody comes along and the Lord said, hey, you need to let that go. You need to rest. You need to stop. Then I realized that it's me doing it. When someone has to come tell me to rest, then I'm missing the rest of God. Did that make sense or did that make sense? Yes, yes, and yes. When someone has to tell me to rest, then I am missing the rest of God. So I need to put be put in check. You know what that means, right? Called on it so that I can align myself with God's word, spirit, soul, and body. This is the gospel. It's good news that you can use in your everyday waking, walking, talking life. And you don't have to remain as you are. You can ask him to come into your heart right now, darling. And maybe you're one of those people and you're saying, well, Dr. Fay, I asked him to come into my life 20 years ago. So I'm good. I'm good. Well, where are you in your relationship with him? Are you on fire, lukewarm, cold? Where are you on the radar, you know, on the thermostat, I guess. Where are you? You know where you are. You, you know if you're not in the word. You know if you're not praying. You know, you know, you know. Examine yourself. Make sure you're not conforming. Going along just to get along. I apologize for my distractions earlier because there was something really goofy going on in that one platform. And I won't call his name, but I'll it, it the platform's name right now. But we'll get that fixed so that when I go live, these messages won't pop up in front of me that should not be there. But nevertheless, the Holy Spirit still spoke, no matter what the devil was trying to do. Don't you just love it? God just knocked the devil out and we kept on going. 
I love you so much. I appreciate your taking your time to spend your time with us tonight in this Bible class. And if you're watching on in social media, you may see some information below this. And if you're watching in a place where it's not, just know that you can contact us at theglobalchurchlive.com. You can also contribute on that page. And I know many of you use Cash App. You can do that using the dollar sign D-R-F-A-Y-E TV. And on that note, I'm going to say good night. Oh, yeah. I want to pray for a couple people before I go. There's someone here, and it could be many people, but someone here, you're facing a, a big, big decision, and you need to make it quickly. And God said to tell you that it's okay to move forward, that all is well. He said, you've got the green light. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? You've got the green light. And you felt it in your heart, but your mind was giving you, you know, some trouble. And God said, you've got the green light, my friend. Go ahead and do it. And I'll honor you. I'll bless you. And you will see the fruit of it. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? God bless you. Father, we thank you. Okay. Until next time, don't forget, I'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye now.